from the vaults. Said I, I've used those sleeves. Those are some of the best sleeves I've I've ever used. Uh, they shuffle really well. They're nice and glossy and uh, and they feel really like they're not gonna like split. They feel really strong yeah, yeah. for some reason. I mean, I I was actually at Gen Con for all of the From the Vault things and I got none of them somehow oh, magically. Well. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> I bought I bought two packs of them, both from at, at Star City events. One, I think, in Baltimore, and then again in, uh, at the yeah. Invitational, I just bought another another pack. Uh, I know they were like limited edition sleeves, but anyway, Glenn <clears throat> is uh, tagging out. Yep. All right. Gavin oh, Verhey back. All right. Cool. So, what do we uh, know about this matchup? Do we know what it is yet? We know this is Peterson with an O. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, as far as what else, we've only established that Peterson himself is actually using uh, some of those special edition sleeves. And now we have oh, no, just been handed list. some deck lists. So, oh, Jerry Thompson. Wait, I know this. Tarmogoy, Vendillion, Clay. All right. So, this is not a mirror match, for sure. Some, this would be fast for you guys. You guys like this one. It's Affinity. Yes. So, we've got Michael Peterson with Affinity versus Jerry Thompson with Countertop. Um, a more classic countertop than the one that uh, that we saw LSV's <laughs> yeah. opponent playing. Um, he's got the, t the four Tarmogoyf and two Vendillion Click as his creatures. Um, some Brainstorm, Swords to Plowshares, Divining Tops. What's that? Yeah. Uh, spell Snare, Counterbalance, Counterspell, Fire Spout, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Force of Will, and Repeal. Um, pretty pretty typical list. So uh, For the sideboard, there's not a lot for this match. You just got Cross and Grip, Fire Spout. So... Uh, Pithy Needle on Ravager? Yeah, you can bring in Pithy Needles. Also, Cranial Plating is a yeah. big one. Right. Uh, I mean, it's worth bringing in. It's not like insane, but right, it's but worth it, bringing it's, in. You know, it's, it's a decent defense, right? Um, and I mean, uh, Peterson also has some options. Thoughts, he's just going to be pretty good for him, I would imagine. Uh, yeah. It's so funny when I see the card Thought Cast. For some reason, <laughs> like, I. That name, I mean, everybody, it's the first name that everybody thinks of when they're like, I'm going to start a podcast. We could call it Thoughtcast. And apparently somebody thought of that in like 2004 because yeah, Tom, if you if you look look it up. Yeah, it's honest. I listened to this only three episodes. Yeah. It's still, still a great yeah. podcast name. Right. And, and uh, yeah, he took the, the probably one of the best podcast name, names out there and uh, and then proceeded to, you know, not use it, not use it to its potential at all. <laughs> Uh, all right. So the game is underway here. Peterson had no turn one play, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, from an affinity deck. Uh, yeah. So there's oh, the glimpse uh, here of comes nature. Glimpse of nature. Uh -oh. and that's not yeah. resolving. Jerry says, uh, "I've seen that before, and it's not good." Yeah. Yeah, he, he was here when uh, the entertainment feature match was happening. Yeah, but I don't think he caught game one. Did he? Oh, okay. I, I think he came in. Well, so, uh, it. so let's get counterspelled, and then uh, Disciple of Vault comes down for Peterson. We were talking about the sleeves Peterson's using. Have you used those sleeves? They're just some of my favorite sleeves I've, I've used. It's the uh, Mox Opal or the, the brand? The the Mox. It, they're actually it's the Mox Diamond. Mox Diamond. I don't know about you know they're they're Ultra Pro as far yeah. as I know. But I mean those specific ones. I mean I've used some bad Ultra Pros <laughs> before, and these I was very impressed with. So actually, yeah, Ultra Pro is really up their game. There was a point where Ultra Pro was pretty low quality sleeves. But they've come out with some new texture sleeves and a lot of great things in the past few, few years. Ones with the magic cards on the backs. They're very high quality now. I prefer them over most other sleeve brands. The texturing is really nice. Uh, I'll use Dragon Shields every now and then too. Mm -hmm. um, I like KMCs. The, uh, those those are, have been my go-to because they're cheap and, and for their cost. I mean, they're, they're good quality. I, I can't do KMCs because uh, A... Uh, so they uh, they scuff. I shuffle really hard, oh, and see. they scuff and get beat up too easily, and they just break really fast. Okay, got it. Um, I tried using them for a while, and they're just totally useless to me. So I had to go with something with a little different, less of a shiny back, got which it. Ultra Pro sleeves have. Yeah. Uh, and you, meanwhile, Cranial yeah. Planning has entered the battlefield. Quite a board presence on Peterson's side. At the moment. Yeah. At least he's he's <laughs> one. He's got it. So disciple, and he just cast a Springleaf Drum. Yeah, so he's got plating, disciple, springleaf drum, yeah, there comes four ravager. artifact lands, and uh, there's a ravager. Uh, Jerry doesn't have any counter magic, so Jerry's got swords. Well, though. He's got a force, but he would have to pitch that brainstorm to use it, or he yeah, cast he, brainstorm he does, to try he does and have dig. Swords though, that's what I he mean. Does have I swords. swords oh. is... And yeah, uh, he just forces that ravager. Yeah, he decides to force it, ditch in the brain, or the counter spell, so or it, brainstorm. Yeah. I think a lot of players might have uh, brainstormed there, but Jerry so shows discipline. Like he cannot risk finding another blue card, you know, mm -hmm. and then being like, "Well, crap, this isn't going to work out." Right. All right. So uh, Peterson quickly equips his creatures. 
and towards the uh, disciple. Get that off the battlefield. She'll let Tarmogoyf, which is getting huge, and in the affinity matchup, Tarmogoyf is just gigantic. Yeah, but then again, cranial plating kind of beats a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, uh, that's certainly bad. true. It's uh -huh. just a uh, <clears throat> matter of actually having something to equip the, the uh, cranial plating to, and at this point, uh, I mean, what I'm, is that? What is that card next to the cranial plating? Spring oh, leaf drum. Spring. Okay, now remember, I see the uh, mirror enforcer up there. Yep, mirror enforcer on the top. A lot of lands here. Edge champion looks like it's going to come down. And, uh, uh, disciple, there's equip, and then Sir. There's no edge champion yet. Offering to trade with the Tarmogoyf, so that comes and down. There's, yeah, there's and then the edge champion with the battlefield here. Absolutely has metal craft. <laughs> I would say he and, is uh, a quite wow, Jerry well. with. Yeah, Jerry nothing. just packs it yeah. in. He's like, all right, can't win this. We're done. Yeah, let's go on. Yeah, it's, that's a smart play, I guess. If he's, uh, you know, with this counterbalance deck, we saw it go to time in game two in uh, LSV's yeah. round. But this seems unlikely to go to time. I mean, it's affinity no, no, against counterbalance. I'm just saying he's he's conserving some time, I think, yeah. by just looking and going. I have three lands and then two lands in hand, and he's got, uh, you know, etched champion on board with a cranial plating. Uh, I'm going to play it on there, there a little bit to see if I can see some of the particulars. Like, I'm not going to do anything. Maybe, maybe my opponent might play an interesting card or something like yeah. that I wouldn't normally expect. But overall, I mean, I don't think it makes a huge difference either way. And uh, yeah, playing on that game isn't going to say that much. See, Countertop is a deck I'd love to play, but I'm afraid of the, just like Kibler was saying, like I'm afraid of the, the frustration of going to time. I mean, I've had that in, happen in standard to me. I've had, you know, yeah. game ones go to time. And, and the thing is, it's not like you're just playing, you know, Kago or some blue-black standard mm -hmm. control deck. Like, there are a ton of decisions you have to make with, with this deck. Not yeah. only with your tops, but like, when you brainstorm how you're setting things up. You have to look multiple turns ahead. If you didn't watch the match earlier with LSV, like, he set up the turns perfectly so that he knew he could brainstorm at, brainstorm at the end of his opponent's turn, put a two, a two cards from the top, cast a counterbalance, and then make sure that that counterbalance would counter a two that his opponent cast. Yeah. Like, it's it was it was, really, really it's got You have to have a lot of foresight into... Yeah. Uh, it's a very difficult deck to play, and that's why like, a lot of the really good players like to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, I just... I, I don't... I mean, I'm sure if I played it a lot, I'd, I'd obviously get better at playing it, but uh, it is one of those things that I'm almost uh, afraid to try because it just seems so intricate you know like there's so many so it's so complex uh, the decision and then just all like Kibler was saying not even so much the decisions but also all the the dirtling around <laughs> uh, that was that's Jerry's word but you know with the uh, fetch lands and top and Jace and brainstorm I mean how many times are you gonna uh, mess around with the top of your library and manipulate it and, and shuffle your library and you know all that kind of thing um, and it, you know it makes a difference when when you're timed, which you are, you know, in most situations. Yeah, I mean, it looks like, um, looking at the sideboard in here, so it seems like Mike Peterson is probably going to bring in Thoughtseize, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, his other choices are Chalice, I don't think he's going to bring that in here. Canonist, no. Pithy Needle, you could name Top, but I don't think he wants to afford the time to do that. Like, I think he just wants to unload his hand and have lots of threats. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, maybe if he thinks Jerry has explosives, it could be worth bringing Pithy Needle, or... But if you're just stopping top, I don't know how good that really is. Um, it's because counterbalance isn't that great against you because you have a lot of diverse mana costs. You know, you've got some fours, and uh, I guess you have a lot of cheap stuff in this build. No right, Amir Enforcers, but... He's got Cross and Grip. Or he doesn't have Amir Enforcer. He doesn't have Cross and Grip, but, which is an interesting card. Yeah. But once again, I mean, I don't really think you want to bring in a reactive card. Once again, you're the beatdown in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. He's the beatdown. <laughs> um, so he's going to bring that, that in. Over on uh, Jerry's side... I think we'll definitely see the Cross and Grips and Sora of Temptation. Those are both uh, great options. And uh, in a few minutes, we're going to be able to uh, open that next clue. Yes, yes, we will. Yeah, so uh, very shortly. So yeah, so Jerry's going to get Cross and Grips, Sora, Fire Spout, and Prong Pithy Needle. There's Depending Jerry looking stylish in his <laughs> Star City Games shirt and his and Express, <laughs> his like Express jacket. Right? And it looks like Express to me. It looks like a combination between. Uh, I don't know, bikers in the 80s and a professional magic player. Yeah. It's a good look for him. I'm not right. even being sarcastic. No, no, I, I agree. I, um, Express is one of the stores I, I really like. That's like I like the men's clothes in Express. Um, so Jerry leads off with a Scalding Tarn. All right. 
and uh, your tree of tales. I see a glimpse. Of, does he have a glimpse of nature? Let's see. Mm. No, he like goes. Uh, Opal, spring leaf from. I mean, yeah, for some reason I thought champion. I saw a green card in there, but it may just be the uh, the sheen of the screen. Oh, the, he, oh he, there he, it is. Croston grip. He did bring in Croston grip. Interesting. Yeah. I really felt like you couldn't afford to take the time to do that, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> and and here's affinity for you. All right, <laughs> land go. Okay, five permanents go. Yeah. What is that foil? Uh, ancient den, and oh. champion. So his hand is ancient den, etch champion. No, no. no what's the foil that he just put in? Oh, play? frogmite. Yeah, okay. I frogmite just, is just what entered the battlefield. It's such a strange it, look to it in foil. Yeah. His board, for those who uh, aren't sure, is springleaf shrub, mox opal, tree of tails, and for his creatures, he's got memnite and frogmite. The two mites, as it were. Yeah. He might pull this game out. Jerry might have an answer. Jerry might. That's that's kind of a. Huh. Jerry <laughs> might get there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but Mike also might get there. <sighs> Let's see what happens. So he brainstorms. There was a point in time when I don't think I ever saw Jerry Thompson without some sort of like uh, hat, you know, like like yeah. Oh yeah, like he, would, he would not take the skull cap off. That's another. That's a Mike Jacob thing too. That's true, Mike Jacob. I don't think I I still have yet to see him without <laughs> without the uh, skull cap. So there's so a there's a counterbalance. And uh, he's got the Christian grip for that, fortunately, for uh, Michael. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I guess on turn two, like obviously counterbalance can negate a lot of things. It just feels like you're being so reactive with those Croson grips. And obviously Jerry realizes something's up when his opponent with three cards in hand just passes back. Yeah. And there's Glenn in the background taking <laughs> taking Jones. pictures for like a quick sh quick second you saw. Him. But uh, so he goes with the land. What is, it looks like uh, potential four mana on the affinity side. Oh, and there's Tarmogoy. But Oh, not just three. Because and of the main. Really, there goes yeah. Counterbalance. He's, he's going to flip and see if he has Yeah, just, just in case. Yeah, because this is one of those things with, uh, even though Croson Grip has split second, it still triggers the uh, the counterbalance. is in a response. It's a trigger. Yeah. So uh, right. there's all kinds of tricks you can pull with that. And yeah, it'll always trigger with a split second. So you can kind of navigate your way to make right. it work. There are ways to counter split second spells, but pretty much have to have counter You can also, also Willbender split second spells. Yeah, that's true. And uh, you can use split second to beat a Deep Sea Kraken, as it turns out. Good to know. I For all you uh, guys jamming the time spiral uh, draft circuit. <laughs> so uh, let's see, so we got Tarmogoyf. They seem to have uh, Tarmogoyf versus uh, Memnite uh, Frogmite. And so that Tarmogoyf looks to be a uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, I believe. And maybe a 5? Definitely see land, instant um, enchantment. enchantment, creature. So that's 4. Creature, artifact creature. Oh, artifact creature. So, right. that's, so that's 5. five. And uh, Jerry's going to crack and go up to 4 here. Let's see what happens. Huh. Interesting. So he fetches up, what was that, a uh, volcanic island? Is that what he grabbed? Or? Yeah. Oh, and, uh, he and here comes Sower. of Temptation. Yeah, and have the, my frog And might. those Sowers are good he so good here, because the Affinity to the deck doesn't really have any removal. Right. And just steals their best creature, and it could really be yeah. a backbreaker. When I was playing fairies, or basically anything, and extended, I was always happy to have Sower of, of Temptation against uh, Affinity. It's interesting to me that a 2-2 a two -two is, is his best creature. I mean, it is right now his best creature, yeah. but... I mean, his uh, draw really hasn't developed that well. Right. But Jerry, uh, just taking the... Oh. Decides, you know what? I'm going to beat you down. Yeah. You just know, take, take who's to beat down? And you know, this time... <laughs> Jerry says, I'll be to beat down. Packs a little prematurely. Yeah. That was, uh, that was interesting. Jerry just says... I mean, we were just saying about how... You, Crows and Grip is a reactive card. Now, Michael Peterson, somehow, with the affinity list kind of taking a reactive stance and Jerry decides I've got a I've got a draw that's gonna let me attack you with one of your own guys and three of mine and uh, just beat you down so kind of odd right that's the danger with bringing in the Croson grip is that you know 
What if that Crystal Grip was just a, a Frogman or a Mirror Enforcer or a Glimpse of Nature or whatever he took out? I don't yes, know. Some, some other creature. No. I mean, maybe he probably wouldn't have won him that game. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Counterbalance was kind of threatening, but at the same time, especially on the play, I think you should board them out because you just want to power through it, drop your hand fast. Yeah. And he'll, your be on the, he'll be on the play here, so. And uh, we had an interesting discussion earlier, and it's just interesting. So when Affinity came out, right, like Frogman and Mirror Enforcer were very sizable creatures. They were big, big back in their day. But now, not so much. Like you, you, you can get three threes for one mana. And now, you know, instead of having to do all this backbreaking work to play four fours and two twos, I mean, you can just play a cheaper creature. So the Fiddy deck has really only taken off because of Glimpse of Nature, I feel. Like, that, yeah. is, that is the card. It's perfect for Affinity. Yes. And you play Cryptic Glimpse, you can unload your hand. I mean, Cryptic Plane is obviously also very good. Mox Opal is a nice new addition. But I think uh, Glimpse is, is the big one. Yeah, no, I mean, that one's the one that wasn't wasn't there in the standard uh, version of the deck at all, but... Which is funny, because the deck actually existed in the same environment. I, I know, it I could have played it, but, I mean, there just wasn't, you know, it was a much different deck back then, right? Right. You know? Like, you yeah. didn't have Memnite, for example, which is also a huge new addition to make the Glimpse of Nature really work. Right, absolutely. I mean, a card uh, that Cedric Phillips was trying for a while was Repeal and then Glintock, just so you could reset your Zero Castle Castle artifacts to draw some more cards. Yeah. What, uh, I know Master of Ethereum was a big, you know, a big deal when he was printed for, uh, you know, people talking about using him in Affinity, but obviously this list doesn't run him. Um, how, uh, do, do, do most Affinity lists just forego the uh, Master of Ethereum? Yeah, I mean, I think Master probably would have been in the etched champion spot. Yeah. But the problem is that, uh, I think that really, so, so really wants to glimpse some nature people, right? Yeah. So... I mean, it, the three mana, including a blue, doesn't play into that plan so well. Although, honestly, I don't really feel like the Etch Champions are that good in this deck. Just from what I've seen them play, like some theory, they don't seem that impressive. They like, block a Goblin Pile Driver, right? Like, they'll block some dudes, but I think they're mostly good on defense, not on offense. I don't know, I think they're there for the potential of uh, cranial plating on them. And, right, I mean, uh, swinging yeah. in, just killing in, in one swing. Or all right, two obviously, that's very good. I mean, three mana, two two protection from all colors is still very strong, right? Yeah. I think it's there for that potential, and otherwise, I mean, it, you know, having the protection is relevant, even just if it's a two-two. I mean, even I haven't played it in Affinity, so I don't right. know. It just seems very underwhelming every time I've seen it cast so far. Yeah, because I mean, um, even in limited, when I can get turn on a metalcraft, it's even not that insane. It's like, okay, well, I've got this guy, but you know, it's not that awesome. Uh, for those of you just joining us, this is uh, round four of SCG Live here at the Star City Games Open Series in San Jose. I'm Gavin Verhey and I'm joined by uh, Joey Pasco here. And we're watching a match between uh, Michael Peterson playing a Affinity, pretty fast deck. There he with, is right there. With some new additions. You've got Glimpse of Nature, which is not a new card I recognize, but has really been strong in this archetype using Memnite, which is a new card. Yeah, we saw Patrick Chapin go off crazy with yeah. it in round one. Turn one Glimpse of Nature, like what scary thing can the innovator do? Like, you're sitting across with somebody and it's Patrick Chapin and they cast turn one glimpse of nature, like, <laughs> that's so frightening. Yeah, I mean, and he ended up smashing in for 12 on turn two. Um, but... So here we go with an, uh, looks like a pretty explosive draw on Peterson's end. Uh, Tree of Tales, Memnite, cool. Mox Opal, into Disciple, into of, Disciple Vault. of Vault, and then uh, Pithing Needle naming. And, and it looks like uh, Jerry's got some uh, forces Jerry, in his yeah. hand. He's, he's going to uh, get the needle away. Yeah, so, on, so on that good segue, on the other side of the match, we've got Jerry Thompson, who's playing a counterbalance list that him and Luis have worked on. Luis is a little different, but uh, still pre they're pretty close together. And, yeah, pretty opposite sides. One slow deck, one uh, fast affinity deck. Yeah, and we've got the uh, the match so far is split. Yeah. And, and split. Uh, Peterson and Peterson took game one, right? And, and uh, uh, that's, for those who can't see, it's Hannah Block. That's a mere enforcer yeah. that uh, Peterson just snapped into play. And that's a pretty quick clock on Jerry, but right. Peterson's out of cards. So if Jerry can figure out a way out of this, it'll be strong. The problem is uh, the needle on the top is going to be an issue. And here it's so definitely... He, does he, he doesn't have needle on oh, top. No. He, oh, no. It got forced. The play, it got forced. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Jerry so will try and Jerry dig his way out of it. use the top. He sees a fire spout. That's going to be... <laughs> Blow out. Oh, well, okay. I mean, Could, it doesn't kill Mirror Enforcer. It doesn't kill the Mirror Enforcer, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah.
I'm sorry, I'm like always rooting for the control deck. <laughs> Almost. I mean, it's also Jerry to you, you know? It, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's another After thing. always been in the booth this weekend giving great commentary, it's hard not to Absolutely. feel a little connection there. Absolutely. And after he was in the booth earlier when LSV was playing, he provided some great commentary. It's worth like, going back and watching later on. All right, so there's a Mark Van Worker. Michael just playing off the top of his deck at this point. Yeah. Both these players are 3 0. So, uh, you know, they're really trying to make their mark here. 4 0. We we'll want them to a good start. We have eight rounds today. Uh, I yeah, believe. I believe so. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, eight, eight, eight rounds. rounds. To the top eight. Eight rounds and a cut to the top eight. So you start off 4-0. You're just two rounds away from being able to double draw in, which is uh, what, I'm sure not what Jerry's thinking of because he doesn't. Uh, he believes he should play, just play one match at a time, which is usually correct. Yeah. You know, one match at a time. Keep playing till they tell me to stop. But. Uh, yeah, um, we had Jerry on Yo MTG Taps episode 50 along with Patrick Chapin uh, together on that episode and uh, Jerry was a little preoccupied. He was in a car during a blizzard while they were trying to get home but uh, he did he did have some interesting things to say and he was, uh, not only did they debate the merits of, of uh, unbanning land tax uh, in Legacy, um, he also announced his book that... Uh, we're going to be getting some more information on that, I believe, in the next few weeks, sometime around Pro Tour Paris. Um, but he is writing pretty much the first Magic autobiography. Um, it's going to be pretty much his his story, how he, uh, you know, his story as far as becoming the Magic player that he is today. And uh, I, I'm I'm excited. I don't know if it's going to be uh, an ebook or a printed book or both, but I'm excited to read it. it sounds very that sounds really cool. Yeah. I mean, if you guys have read Johnny Magic and the Card Shark Kids. Yeah, I read that. That was that was really cool. I like that. Yeah. And that was a more of a biographical kind of uh, about John Finkel. Right. Biographical. Yeah, that was an autobiography, but yeah. Was wait a minute. It wasn't. It wasn't a. It wasn't written by John Finkel, right? No, it wasn't. Right. So it's just a biography. Right? Isn't that what? Oh, yeah, I, I thought it was the other way around. Autobiography no. is written by the by the uh, person who it's oh, about. Okay. Yeah. Well, that, now I know. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So Jerry writing his own book, it's an autobiography. Okay. Right, his own story. Right. right. So, so it's, that, that's, that makes it even better. So right. it looks like Michael's board got wiped. That uh. Yeah, that fire that, spout. That fire spout did, did some work. What happened to the mirror enforcer? Did he uh, did he plow it or something? I'm, it's a there's a huge glare on, <laughs> on Jerry's I, I, graveyard. As I'm sure you guys are well aware. But uh, either way, somehow it disappeared, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Plow that took it out. Well, I, I don't think so, because I, I see in his graveyard there's a Force, two Flooded Strands, and then a Mystery card. I don't know what happened there. And he just passed back. Jerry's firmly in control now. This is the last call for draft open. Double Tarmogoyf. Double go. boy. Last call for draft open registration. It's like double rainbow. I mean, oh my right. god. Here's, here's <laughs> Arcbound Worker. <laughs> Arcbound Chump Bucker. Yeah, and at honestly. this point, it's looking bad. Yeah, he's like, what do I have? Creature, artifact, creature. Oh, there's. I, I believe we have land, instant, artifact, creature. Uh, so wow. it's and there it is, it's top and got, counterbalance. Yeah, it's going to be rough. It's assembled the combo. At five life, Jerry Thompson has stabilized quite handily with uh, counterbalance top and two Tarmogoyfs on board. Um, what is that pithing needle on? Oh, Enforcer got Crosen Gripped. Crosen Grip. Okay. That's the mystery card that we can't see. Uh, okay, so yeah, Crosen Grip and then Fire Spout. I mean, that, that makes sense. I was looking down his deck, let's see what he could have used, but... All right, Michael looks uh, pretty much done here. Yeah. Uh, Jerry's at five life, but uh, that, that, all that matters is the last point. That's right. When Jerry gets back in the booth here, maybe we'll ask him a little, a little bit about his book, and he can tell us about it. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that sounds, sounds really interesting. Sounds like a good plan. I'm sure he'll uh, wander over and tell us a harrowing tale. Yeah, you can... Uh, if you can't wait, oh, or if we can't we seem to get like uh, Jerry in here, I'm sure that's not likely. But anyway, if you want to go back, or if you and, just like yeah, Yo MTG Taps. right, just go back and listen to Yo MTG Taps episode 50.